Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, happy Easter everyone. I hope you've had a, a lovely morning and maybe not eating too much chocolate, but if you have, sure, I'm sure you deserve it today. We are so excited by this service. Lots of you have been involved in our Play It By Ear drama production, which we're going to show during this service. So stick around and enjoy that. It's super. Thank, thank you to all who were involved in it. But today we're going to start by celebrating the Halloweens. And normally what we do on Easter Sunday is I start the celebration of the Hallelujahs. This side of the church stands up and says, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then this side of the church stands up and says, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Do you know what? You're not here in the church, so we have to be a little bit creative today. So here's how we're going to do it. If your first name starts with an A all the way up to M, so if you're an Alan, the whole way up to a Mark, what you're going to do is you're going to stand up when Brian stands up and you're going to say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. If your name is N to Z, so if you're uh, Neil all the way to a Zebediah, you're going to, we haven't got very many Zebediahs in the parish, but you're going to stand up and with Lynn, you're going to say, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Here we go. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, conquered death for us. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose triumphant from the grave. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will return in power and majesty. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to go straight into our great drama of Easter. Off we go. The third person who'll go around making a racket, I always know. They don't call me a librarian's best friend for nothing. Derek, oh. is oh. that you? What are you doing out here making such a commotion? A commotion? Me? It wasn't me. It, it was that lot. They're making the commotion. Particularly that one. Yeah, I've got my eye on you. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. He's a bit wound up at the minute. You see, we're part of the Neighbourhood Watch. Maybe we can get all these people here to help us with our inquiries. How about we tell them what happened? Fine, we'll do that, okay? All right, everyone. It started, well, about a week ago. I was just doing my crossword, as you know, I do every, every week, and when suddenly I heard this, this noise, I couldn't work out where it was coming from, but I spied out my window, and then I saw them, a big crowd, cheering. <laughs> They were waving pans. <laughs> Palms, Dave. We've been over this before. They were waving palm branches. <laughs> oh, my bad, Derek, my bad. Although I am right in thinking some of them were laying their boats on the street, weren't they? <laughs> Coats, Dave. They were laying coats on the street for that Jesus fella. That makes more sense. Although, not that much more sense. Why on earth were they laying their coats on the ground? Dave, it's like I said, it was for that Jesus. It was a sign of respect. Oh yes, that's right. And they were shouting all sorts as well, weren't they? Oh yes. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yes, that was it. And, and what was the other one? Uh, Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. And I think I even heard some people shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Absolute nonsense if you ask me, Dave. People thinking this Jesus was a messiah riding into town on a donkey. He's hardly going to lead the charge against the Romans, is he? On a donkey. I don't know about that, Derek. I thought there was something special <laughs> about him. Well, the religious leaders certainly didn't think so. They were furious with him. Do you remember what they said? This is terrible. I can't believe what I'm hearing. This is disgraceful. Come on, Jesus. Your followers can't say things like that. Jesus didn't care about their religious leaders complaining about him. Oh, no, he didn't. He just turned around and he said, if the crowds keep quiet, then the stones will cry out instead. <laughs> the stones, there, the stones, they didn't know what to do. <laughs> They weren't the only ones. I didn't have a clue. Honestly, I was at a loss. I could not get rid of this crowd. You know, I tried to drive them off with the old stick, you know, a couple of whacks, but they, they didn't care. And then I got a big bucket of water out and I tried to soak them, but they wouldn't budge. It was only when that Jesus moved on that we finally got a bit of, well, a bit of normality around here. I don't know if normality is quite the right word, Derek. Oh, no. You see, Jesus, he was all over Jerusalem. He was saying amazing things. He was doing the most unbelievable miracles. It was incredible. Yes, yes, yes. But more importantly, he stayed away from our street and we could finally get some peace and quiet. Well... At least till the end of the week anyway. Oh yes, the end of the week mm. when the crowds came back. Although they weren't cheering this time, were they, Derek? They oh were no, they no. weren't cheering. They were booing. No! Boo! Boo! It wasn't nice, was it, Derek? No. And I tell you, I couldn't believe it when I realised they were angry with Jesus of all people. I mean, who knew a crowd could turn so quickly? Well... The religious leaders, they, they hardly helped matters, did they? They, they went around whispering in the crowd's ears and, and really riling them up. Mm. Jesus is a troublemaker. Did you hear what he says? He's a liar. The son of God, that's what he said. How dare he? Something got to be done. Did you hear, Derek, that it was one of his own followers who betrayed him? Apparently he led the guards right to him. Aye, and then they dragged him to, to some religious court and then off to Pilate. That, that's the Roman governor in charge around this place. And Pilate, he could understand why the crowd was so upset. He's a troublemaker! He's a troublemaker! He's a troublemaker! Get rid of him! Come on, get rid of him! Boo, boo, get rid of him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! You can have either Barabbas or Jesus. Pilate didn't know what to do, did he, Derek? No. He didn't think Jesus was guilty, but he also didn't want to anger the crowd. No, so then, well then he had a brilliant idea. He decided that he would offer up a prisoner to be freed. Tell Pilate we want Barabbas. Let's hear you! Barabbas! 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 Hear that, Pilate? Free Barabbas. Come on, everyone, louder! Barabbas! 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 It didn't make sense. I mean, Barabbas, he had done some terrible things, whereas Jesus, all he did was help people. You're right, Dave. I think it's safe to say Pilate's plan had backfired. He had had enough. I wash my hands of this. Do what you want with this, Jesus. And he hung there between two common thieves. He didn't deserve that, Dave. I know I said he was a nuisance, but he never did anything to deserve that sort of punishment. There was an odd feeling all over the city when he was there hanging on that cross. Like somehow everyone knew a terrible thing was being done. And the oddest thing happened when he died. The whole city went dark. Never seen anything like it. Aye, it was unsettling all right. There were odd reports coming in all day about strange things happening over town. But eventually it went back to normal and the peace and quiet returned. Just the way I like it. Wait, wait, Derek, do you hear that? Do you hear that, Derek? What, what is that noise? Jesus is alive! Right, that's it. Dave, I've had enough. That is a clear violation of the noise regulations. 
32, which clearly but states... Derek, 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 will you be quiet? Slow down. What are you talking about? The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. That's not possible. The men guarding the tomb have probably just moved his body. No, they haven't. An angel appeared, the guards fainted, and we screamed. But the angel told us not to be afraid. Jesus had risen. Wait a second. Jesus did say he'd rise again. He did. Well, this must be true. Let's go. Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive! Would you look at that, Dave? Look at that! They are quite clearly running through a zone marked walking only. Walking only, Dave. This this is a disaster. A disaster? Yes! A disaster, Derek. Are you serious? For goodness sake, have you not been listening to any of this? If Jesus is alive, that means all of his miracles, well, they weren't just cheap tricks, but instead it means that he was telling the truth all along when he said that he was the Son of God and that he had come to show us the way. This, this is most certainly not a disaster. In fact, Derek, this is the best day ever. Come on, we have to go and tell people all about it. Come on, Derek. You're right, Dave. I'm, I'm right behind you. Just like, I have first a wee logbook here now. Uh, let me see. Uh, what will I put down? Oh, I need to make sure I have a clear note of the running disturbance. Yes, let me just add that in. Or, yes, now. And then the, oh, who cares? This is too big a deal. I've got to go and tell everyone, Jesus, Jesus is alive. Oh. So well done to everyone who was involved in the play by ear drama and thank you guys for your participation. I want us to pray the collect for Easter Sunday. So let us pray that we may reign with the risen Christ in glory. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and glory, honour and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. On Easter Sunday morning, we traditionally meet at the lead mines and we watch the sunrise. Well, we can't do that this time, but we thought we would bring the um, lead mines to you as we hear our gospel proclaimed today. So we hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ according to John, chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told him, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen wrappings, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen wrapping lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen wrappings, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. They still did not understand the scripture, which said that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb, and while she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And she saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? they asked her. She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, If you have took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, this means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my Father and their Father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. During Holy Week, we have been thinking about three words. On Thursday, we thought of the word royalty. On Friday, the word sacrifice. Today, the word we think about is the word victory. Let me share with you a story. A number of years ago, before I was in Kilchernan, one of my roles was to be chaplain to an acute hospital. And they were back in the days when you could actually visit hospitals. And there was one person who I remember going to visit and we would often have got a list of maybe 15 names to see in the morning so it was quick and I went into a room and there was a lady in a bed and I went in with the collar I briefly introduced myself and she did something that has stuck with me that I had never experienced and I've never experienced again what she did was she, she took her hands and she covered her face and awkwardly I stood there and she lay in the bed and she had her eyes and her nose and her mouth entirely covered and she kept it covered until the moment that I left. I had never experienced it before and I, I debriefed it later with, with the Dean. And he, he knew who she was and he knew her story. And he shared that that wasn't an unusual thing for her to do. And he told me a little bit about her life that, of course, we don't go into today. But there was a woman who had had a tough time. And it was a woman who, who was quite simply defeated. And as a result of living as someone who was defeated, what she did was she hid herself away perhaps as a result of being trapped in her own sense of shame or her own sense of worthlessness. When, when faced with any situation, she, she covered her eyes and she tried simply not to be seen. And as I reflected on that experience, it, it made me think about those places in my own life where I hide away. And it made me think about those places in my life where I live as someone who is defeated. Listen, very few of us have a reaction as extreme as to cover our face, but we all have those places which we hide away from others. And we all have those places where we just live as if we are beaten. Today is Easter Sunday, and today's word is victory. Through the resurrection, through the open tomb, through the risen Christ, we live as if shame has been defeated. We live as if love has beaten death. And that's not to trivialise the challenges that we all have in life, because listen, we have challenges every day. But it's to say that we don't need to live as a defeated people, because in Christ we live as a people victorious. Easter invites us into that. Not because of anything we have done. Not because I'm great or you're great. Although in many ways I'm sure you are great. But because of what he has done for us. Today, and every day of our Christian life, we stand in the light of the victorious Christ. And we are invited to take the hands away from our face and from our hearts and to live in his light and in his glorious gaze. Amen.
Be present, be present. Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. To this day, why do we give our thanks and praise? For God is love and does wonderful things. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all things reflect your glory. You gave us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You gave us love that lasts forever in your Son, Jesus Christ. And in him you bring us close to you. In times of celebration, you give us happy times and things to celebrate. In these we see your kingdom and we taste a feast for all to share. You made us all to love and to serve you. And so we join with the angels to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because you sent Jesus, your Son, to be born and to live among us. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Why do we share this bread and wine? They show us the love of Jesus for us. In the night before he died, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he shared it with his disciples. This is my body, he said, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks and he shared it with his disciples. This is my blood, he said, poured out for you and for all people to save them from their sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and change us more and more to be like him. Make us joyful as we celebrate his death for us on the cross and his rising from the dead, and share these gifts to strengthen us to follow him. How do we follow Jesus Christ? By loving God and by loving our neighbours. Help us to love all people and to work together for that day when all the needs of the world are met, when suffering is ended and the whole of creation is gathered into your loving arms. With all your saints we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We say together our act of spiritual communion today. O oh, loving God, in union with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries, gather to break bread, hearing your holy word, and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear Son. I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me. 
and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. Living God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to you at the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily unto sin, that we may evermore live in him, in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope for you a blessed Easter. I hope that you have a sense today of living in the victory of, of God. I thank all the folk from the Play by Ear Drama Company and all who were involved in putting together our Easter drama today. Let me leave you today with the words of God's blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, Raise ye up to walk with him in the newness of his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in the peace of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.